Okay then, so now we've created our first Netlify function and we've deployed it and we can access it using this endpoint right here. We can access that from the browser and we get that response that we want. But I wanna test my functions locally before I deploy them and currently I can't do that because our local dev server doesn't run them or even know about them. So if I was to try and access our functions using localhost port 3000 like this, it doesn't work. However, we can install the Netlify CLI to give us access to a special Netlify dev command. And this will spin up a local server so we can preview our site just like before, just like this. But it will also allow us to run functions locally too. Now, Netlify does this by running our functions on one port and our Next.js site on another port. So we have two separate things running on different ports. One with our site and one with the functions. Now, by default, they can't communicate with each other because they're on different ports. So, Netlify Dev spins up a proxy server as well on a single port to bring these two things together under this one port so they can communicate with each other. So, now we can just use the one port on localhost, preview our site and access our Netlify functions. So, let's try installing the Netlify CLI to do this. So you want to install this globally on your computer. So in a terminal, type npm install netlify hyphen CLI and then hyphen G to install this globally on your computer. So press enter to do that. All right then, so now that's installed, we can now run netlify dev but before you do this, make sure the other process, which is running our site on localhost port 3000, when we typed npm run dev right here, make sure you cancel out of that process. So control C and then yes, because this command over here, Netlify dev is going to spin up a server at port 3000 as well to show our site on, but it's also going to create the proxy server on a different port, but it is going to use that 3000 port. So make sure you cancel out of the other process first, then you can run Netlify dev. And if we take a look at this, let's just make it a bit bigger. We can see we've got local host. Oops, it's opened up already for me. Let me cross off that. We can see we've got up here local host on port 3000. This is for our website, but then also it's created this proxy server for us as well. And using this, we can preview the website, but also we can access the functions. So we can see that's the one that's opened up right here. Now there is a problem. Uh, we don't see any of the links inside the navbar over here. And that's because we're using this different port right here. Now before, when we started to use Netlify identity, we had to enter in the development settings so it could communicate with Netlify on the back end. Now we've not done that for this port. So we need to go to our navbar just very quickly. And I want to close this for a second. And what I'm going to do is comment out this where we say auth ready and this as well. And I'm going to save this, come back over here. And now we see this login thing. Now when we click on this, it's again going to ask us for the URL of our Netlify site so it can communicate with it. So every time we use a different local host port, you're going to have to do this. So I'm going to go back to our project and I'm going to grab this thing right here. So copy that and paste it inside here, set the site's URL. And now I can log in and log out and all that kind of jazz. So now I can go back over here and uncomment this because it's now going to work. Oops. Don't know what I've done there. Let me just uh, control Z. Let's get rid of this right here. And we just want to add in our parentheses again. Royally mess that up, but now that should work. So if I save, we can still see this. Let's just test the login flow. I'm going to say Mario at the net ninja code it UK and then test one, two, three, four, and then I'm going to log in. And now we can see this all works and I can log out as well. Awesome. So now we're previewing on this port. I can access the functions on that port as well. So if I go to functions and grab this function endpoints all the way up to here, so not the domain right here, but this part of it, this part of the path, I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it after localhost port 8888. And now I should be able to access it. Oops, I've grabbed all of it. I want to take a lot of this away. So all of this. So just from .netlify, if I press enter now, now it works. Now we can use that function locally, which is awesome. 
So what I could do now is make a request to this endpoint right here to fetch this data from one of our page components. So I'm going to do that from the guides component right here. So let's open up that guides component inside the pages folder right here. And to do this, we're going to be using use effect. So use effect. And I'm going to click on this to auto import it from React. This is going to fire a function and we're going to pass in an empty dependency array. So it just fires once when the components first mounts. All right, so let's do a fetch request and um, we're going to paste in this URL right here. So it's a relative URL. So this is going to work locally and also when we deploy this as well. So we're going to fetch that resource and then down here, we tack on the then method to fire a function when this is complete because it's asynchronous, it returns a promise. So we take the response inside this function and we do something with it. Now, when we're using the fetch API like this, we have to take this response and grab the JSON data from it and pass it into something we can use. Now to do that, we say response.json, which is a function. This is also asynchronous and returns a promise. So we tack on a then method again to fire another function. When we actually have that data returned to us from this and we take that data into this function, and we can do something with it. So I'm just going to log that to the console, console.log data. And remember that data is going to be this thing right here. So let's give this a whirl. I'm going to open up the console now over here. And if I refresh, it's going to make that request. And now we see this data right here, this object. So we've made a request to our function. The function runs at the minute locally, but later on, it's also going to work when we deploy this as well. And it's retrieving that JSON data for us. And we're just logging it to the console. So now we know how to work with Netlify functions. We know how to deploy them. We also know how to work with them locally using the Netlify CLI and Netlify dev. In the next video, what we're going to do is create another function that is going to help us work with Netlify identity to detect whether a user is logged in or not. And then we can return a response dependent on that status. If they're logged in, we'll return data. If they're not, we'll return something else, some kind of error. So we'll start that process next.